Hello, my name is Joey, and I'm going to be teaching you how to create a graphical user interface, aka a GUI, in Java. To start, I would like you to import javix.swing.asterisk, which basically says import javix.swing library. And I want you to note that example GUI is the name of my class. Now, the first thing we need to create is a J-frame for our GUI. You can think of the J-frame as the like overall border, border that we stick everything else on top of. I've named my J-frame my frame, and I, this is the line that specifically creates the object. You should notice that this text right here will be reflective of the text in the upper left corner, like the title bar of the GUI. So you can name it whatever you want. I've chosen to call it my GUI application. Down here, we set several uh, attributes of the JFrame. Right here, we set the size in width and then height in pixels. You can look at the comments to the right of these lines of code, by the way, for some neat pointers. We set the location and since it's set to null, Basically, it's it, whenever we uh, spawn the object, the GUI in question, it will put it in the middle of the screen. Next, this is really critical. You want to make sure you have this line of code. You want your object dot or your frame dot set default close operation parentheses J frame dot exit on close. This is important because it states what happens when you click the little exit button in the upper right corner of the frame. Basically, if you don't have this set, it won't actually like close the application, which means you'll have that running in the background of your computer and then you'll have to manually go and find it and close and it's, it's a hassle. So make sure you have this. Now this right here, this line of code, my frame dot set visible, this will actually uh, like make your GUI visible and appear. It won't be display displayed until you actually set this up. Now let's, I'm going to show you what happens. I'm going to click play. Now as you can see I've actually created a GUI. It's very bare bones. It doesn't actually have any buttons or anything. If you notice it says my GUI application right here and that's what the text that was put right here. And it doesn't have anything yet. It's just a frame. We're going to fix that now. I'm going to click exit and then I'll show you how to create some bun buttons and then I'll show you how to create some panels to put buttons into. All right, now I've added some buttons, which you can see here. First one I created was called OK button. By the way, these are both called J buttons. And I created it. And then on the next line, I set the text for it. If you notice down here, however, you can cut out this OK button dot set text. You can cut out the ability, the need to set the text by simply uh, putting it in the parentheses when you create it, like I did down here for button two. You can set tooltip text, which means when you uh, hover your mouse over the button, it'll spout some little text at you. And then I added both of these buttons down here using myframe.add. It's important to note that right now, even though I created these buttons, they don't actually do anything. And we're going to have some issues because they're not going to be very organized. I'll show you what I mean. See, not exactly a very uh, useful GUI. You can at least see the uh, hover text when I hover my mouse over it. They aren't very organized. So I need to uh, try to define some layouts and get some panels in here to try to organize all this. Now, if you'll notice, I added something really crucial right here on line 42. 
I set a layout for the my frame object. I said my frame dot set layout new grid layout two by five. This is really important to note because while there you can have the objects just slapped into it, you want to have a layout set. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be a grid layout. It can be a there's a few different kinds it can be. I just pick grid layout because it's simple and it fulfills our purposes. What this two and this five means is that it's going to create two columns are two rows and five columns my apologies now watch what happens if i click run this time suddenly i have two buttons and they're they're organized they're still not as cool looking as i would like them to be but they fulfill their functionality anyways i'm going to show you panels next because panels will help make all of this so much easier. All right, so I've added some panels, some J panels to be specific, and I'm gonna walk you through what I've done to modify my code. You'll first notice that I created these this J panel right here by saying J panel, and I specified what I wanna name it, equals new J panel. Then I set a border for my panel. I made a new titled border. You'll see what this ends up looking like in a little bit. Then I added the two buttons that I had above. I added them to my panel and I set the size of the panel, which ultimately it won't matter in this instance because of the various settings. And I will take the time to explain that, but I'm still not fully certain of what causes that. Anyway, I have my OK button, I have my button too. For the purposes of this, I removed the uh, size settings for the OK button and button two. And if you notice here, I created a second panel as well as a third button. If you pay some little extra attention here on line 49 of my code for button three, I set the foreground color. I just felt this was something a little, little neat you might want to notice. And then panel two, as I previously specified, I want you to notice the big difference between panel one and panel two, besides the fact that they have different numbers of buttons, is that for panel two, I specified a new grid layout, whereas for panel one, I didn't specify any kind of layout. Anyway, I added button three to panel two. And then on the my frame object, you know, my frame, I added panel one and panel two. I'll show you now what my GUI looks like. Ta-da! These are the little titled borders, panel one border, panel two border. And if you notice, remember how those two buttons were really big? Well, now they're just kind of small and as big as they need to be. They aren't particularly organized. Whereas this one that I tried to add a grid layout to, it uh, made the button obnoxiously huge. Anyway, now I'm going to show you how to actually add some functionality to these buttons using action listeners. Anyways, now I'm going to show you how to do action listeners. Huh? Wait, what happened to all of our code? Actually, I did this on purpose. I needed, in order to do the action listeners the way we needed to, I needed to put them in a separate class and you'll see why. For now, just know that if you want to create another class, right, you can click over here, file, new file, go to Java, class, next, type in the class name, define, the project should already be defined, and then you could put it in a different package if you want, but for our purposes, you shouldn't need to. Anywho, I'll explain what this is in a minute. This is the class where I've moved everything over, and I'll take a moment to break down how I changed everything. 
For starters, this is the actual big old public class. The class itself doesn't have a main method. Minimize that. That for now. Anyway, it does have a default constructor, which is pretty useful to know. Basically, this will, in the, in the other um, class over here, I can create um, an object of this class using that constructor. Now, up here, I've created these more, more or less global variables. They're the same, same exact things, only they're not inside a uh, method. So I can use them in any method I put in this class. And then um, I'm going to open up this create GUI class that I made. This is all the, um, all the code I put previously in there. That was in the other one. It's all in here, slightly reorganized, but it's fundamentally the same, except for the addition of accent listen the accent listeners. That's a hard word for me to say right now. Anywho, before I get to that, I want to look at this other subclass I made called GUI Listener. It implements Action Listener. You have to make sure this ad override is in there. And uh Basically, it has this one neat little method right here. Now, what this does is by implementing action listener and putting in blah, 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 action performed. Um, whatever I attach it to, see up here, I've created a, uh, I've created an instance of it, my, my listener object. Basically, whatever uh, I attach it to, in this case, let's say, OK button which I actually have the code here, okay, button dot add action listener, my listener. Anytime that button is triggered, it will basically perform this right here. This method is, this object will be actively listening for any action that is performed that it has been attached to. Now, as soon as that action is performed, which is action event E, um, it'll do whatever code inside I have it specified. Interestingly, I have it specified to sp to different actions depending on what source, what the source of the button press or the action event is. Using e dot get source, I have it say for starters, if e dot get source is equal to OK button, then I will have system dot out dot print line OK button was pushed. I'll just print that off in the console down here in output. Nothing fancy, but it serves the purpose of demonstrating that different things happen when I push buttons now. I also have it, you know, else if, and then I have an else if, both for the other two buttons. Again, remember, you can pause this video at any time and you can take a nice look at my code. Just keep that in mind. Now, back up here, I added the action listeners for each of these buttons I made sure to add this and this all takes place in a method called create GUI oh real quick before I forget I want you to notice that this public class I created is inside the GUI maker class remember that that's important now now that it's since it's inside it will be able to be used really easy without too much hassle in the methods Hence my simple inclusion of it right there in the public void create GUI method. Now to get back to business, the public void create GUI method essentially uh, well actually just creates the GUI. It sets all the attributes that I set before, and it then it creates it. This is my main method. This is my main class. All I have to do is click this, the, the uh, run button, and what will happen is. It will create an object of the GUI Maker class, and then it will run create GUI, which is this method right here. Now watch what happens. Bam! See? Works. Now watch what happens if I click this button, if I click the OK button. Pay attention to the console down over here. Ta-da! 
Okay, button was pushed. Now I'm going to click this button and it goes... Button 2 was pushed. Button 3. Yada, so on, so on, and so forth. Yada, yada, yada. It's nice and pretty. It does its job, and I like it. The stuff you can do is just relocated to printing stuff in console. You can go nuts with whatever you want to put in here. I was just demonstrating how you can use one accent listener to listen to multiple sources and then do different code. You could put all kinds of different methods inside this method and you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with it. But now you know the basics for creating a basic little GUI. You know how to create a frame. You know how to create panels and buttons, and you know how to create action listener for those buttons. Pretty simple. I uh, will probably end up adding extra tutorials later for radio buttons and text fields. And, you know, some generally more complicated stuff. Anywho, if you liked this video, then please... Click, you know, like, have a nice day.